If you get into a heady spin or draw a blank or get excited but don't know what to make much of, when you hear about the highs and lows of the stock markets, we have a beginner's lens just for you. I'm being joined by Dr. Ravi R. Kumar, a stock market trader, as well as Sanjeev Bhaseen, director for IIFL Securities. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us, for taking the time out. Um, Mr. Sanjeev Bhaseen, you're also on a fast, but let me ask you, when you have questions like, the Sensex today crossed 75,000 for the first time, great. But what does this really mean? Does the arm janta, this, do people who do not watch the economic channels, who do not uh, plug into all the economic hardcore data that comes in, do they need to be bothered about this? What's so great about it? You know, if they, are, if they turn around, it sounds great. Can you break this up for them? Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening or good night. And uh, yes, uh, happy Navratris to all. And it is my past. Well, it's a tale of, uh, you know, which you call a feeling of missed out. And for the first time, the Indian demographic premium is playing out to the hilt. So we have a global uh, uh, equity rally, and India has by far been one of the best performers. Now, like you said, this is nothing but financialization of savings, which has happened maybe after 70 years of independence. So, so India's uh, whole demographic premium is playing out to the hilt, and it means it's not you and me, it's the new millennials, the new youngsters who are putting their money where their mouth is by making equity an asset class. And the wealth effect with gold, real estate and stocks all hitting new highs is luring more and more retail participation. So it's a party which has just started. Uh, maybe the stock market is fully priced in the medium term, but any correction would be a buying opportunity. However, we feel that the demographic premium and the financialization of savings is here to stay for the next many, many decades. Okay, Sanjeev Basin, just one quick question. And I don't know if you're familiar with this term, FOMO. That's the fear of missing out. So those who are hearing, hearing you right now and feel that they are missing out of this dividend payback that seems to be happening in the economy, according to you, in the stock markets, is it a time for FOMO or is it a time to act? Well, it is a time to act. If age is on your side and, and you missed out this, then this is the best time to get into it. Because the stock market has only one principle, that as you, the younger you start investing, the more your time you spend with your investments. You know, I'll just give you a small brief. 20 years back, who thought Apple would, you know, foray into China the way it did? And that meant that Apple was looking at the next 20 years of China being a very, very big market. And believe it or not, in the last two years, Apple has made its biggest entry into India. And you are aware how iPhone is spreading the cult. Now that means the Indian demographics are now at a premium to China and that is what is being played out. I was just in London visiting my daughter right. and uh, uh, who's studying there and she, you, guess what? Each and every lady's brand had, had an Indian uh, actress or a model as an ambassador, which tells you that the premium for India is not only being felt in India itself, it's a global, it's a global uh, uh, event. Oh, that's, that, that's a fascinating example. Uh, Dr. Rajiv Kumar, if I could get you in. The Indian stock markets flirting with records highs, lows as well, like today's Nifty's record high but closed in red. Now tell me, is this usual or are there some undercurrents for the arm janta that they need to be drawn to? Uh, what would you tell to the audience that's not what, watching an economic channel but wants to gauge what's really happening in the Indian stock markets and the headlines that's coming out of it? All right, uh, I, I'm sorry, all, I think I, I took like your to name you wrong, sir. That, uh, it's Ravi Kumar. I'm sorry about that. Indian Apologies. Please go ahead. Oh. Uh, I would like to make it clear, as a trader, uh, when, when we see Indian market, I have made this a statement multi on multiple times that our, our Indian market is undervalued. If you are thinking that is 75,000 sensex and 22,500, 600 is nifty and we, uh, we are waiting for 
corrections. This is never too late to enter into the market because uh, we are the highest population in the world and we have our demat, number of demat account is growing. Our economy is growing, gold is growing, silver price is going, everything is going up. But when market is going up, we think now market will crash. Nothing is going to happen in this uh, couple of months that market will crash. The second question for our retail investor, retail trader. They should enter into the market or this is a bubble for them. They should enter into the market. Because, you know, uh, when I started uh, in, in Indian market in 2008, that time there was Lehman Brothers, multiple uh, story, multiple things came into the picture that market will crash and market came down. So, if we will wait for correction, we don't know when correction will come up or where correction will not come up. We have to look for our basics, uh, fundamentals and technicals. We have to mix it okay. and we have to jump in. The second thing, uh, our stock market is the barometer of uh, our stock market is the barometer of Indian economy. So reliance is growing, our operations is growing. Our earlier we used hmm. to two, we used to be 2.5 trillion dollar economy. Now our economy value is four. 4 uh, trillion plus. So if economy is growing, everything is growing. So if a stock market is growing, there is no any bubble. And if people are thinking that okay. I, am, I am a part of FOMO, this is not a part of FOMO. Yep. <laughs> All right. Sanjeev, I see if me? I can get back to you on this. And I'm going... Yes, I'm completely getting you. So let me just get back to Sanjeev Bhasin at this point. And with your experience at hand, I have to ask you this. The factors that are, and, and Mr. Ravi Kumar also spoke about it, the factors that are playing out in this particular context for the highs that we are seeing also include what many are claiming to be the strong economics. Now, elections are also around the corner. How do you break this down for voters away from politics, though the two really can't be seen separate from each other? This is my googly question to you, but I'm sure you'll come out a winner. Yeah, that's a googly question. But look, elections are part and course of every five years. And we've seen that in the last 10 years, I think uh, the growth of the economy, the steps for which PSUs have done well, and uh, the handling of the economy has been uh, arguably the best since independence. Uh, yes, there can be volatility if there is a slight bit of turn on the uh, electoral results. But but you can, you can always expect that uh, because... We are, you know, imminently we have been going straight up. We need, we need some sort of pause over there. What I would like to say is that the biggest investment class which has been created is a SIP, the systematic investment plan in which you do a monthly or a quarterly or a weekly investment and, and you don't time the market. Now that has lured from a population mm. of 140, uh, you know, 140 crore, we have 14, lakh, 14 crore DMAT accounts and that is set to go. Today we have 18,000 crore coming into a SIP in a monthly fashion and that has been the biggest force which has neutralized or marginalized the foreign investors who used to call the shots. <clears throat> I am of the view that the markets may have fully priced a full verdict and uh, we would see more volatility closer to the elections. Uh, on, a in on an index base we are maybe fully priced but like I said for the new millennial or the person who is sitting on the sideline. There is nothing called timing the market. There is the adage called spending time in the market. So you have to see how much of appetite you have to spend time in the market. Next three years, five years, ten years, the more time you spend, the more your wealth will get created. And the volatility or the fluctuations or the corrections will be part and course of a bigger than expected bull market over the next 30 years. All right. Okay, Ms. Dr. Ravi Kumar, if I could come in. Now, Sanjeev Bhasin spoke about your appetite to spend time. And that, unfortunately, is one thing that many don't have at this time. Not the appetite, but the time. So if you're looking at the div uh, demographic dividends, that seems to be playing out right now, as both of you have indicated. You have a population in India that is largely young. The economy is being driven by the youth and the young. But you also have a population that is considerably senior citizens, dependents. And on the other hand, in between of all of this, there is an absolute dearth of time. How do you explain this to the viewers? Up. Oh. 
uh, uh, before we proceed, I would like to make it clear that virtual is the new real. If you are thinking that market has gone up and uh, young generation, youngsters are uh, uh, interested in market right now. Earlier, uh, we don't have much opportunity that how to enter the market and market has very less liquidity. There's two things. First is uh, either market, is, market has liquidity or other market is volatile. So if we are going to jump in any stock like uh, a small stocks, penny stocks, so there's a lot of liquidity. The second thing before uh, we, we jump into, uh, there, there is one thing that is, will election affect our Indian stock market. For a, for a trader, for a monthly trader, for a weekly trader, we don't care. Why? Because uh, uh, we don't think that this m m huge stock like Reliance, SDFC, or Kotak, uh, uh, or Axis Bank, State Bank of India, these are uh, 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 Reliance market cap is more than 20,000 crores. This is not a news driven stock. News can make a couple of corrections in the market to for entry and entry purpose, but uh, in longer view means for few months, if we are looking for, uh, market has a lot of opportunity and if people want to jump in, this is the right time to go ahead and jump into the market. The uh, youngsters, uh, earlier youngsters don't used to think that if uh, a stock market has a business, now they are considering a stock market as a business. There is two kinds of people. One is retailers, one is professionals. So how exactly you are looking into the market as a, as a novice trader, novice investor, means any time we can jump, any time we can come out. Or as a uh, professionals, I mean, professionals know when to enter and where to enter and when to exit and where to exit. But novice people, they don't have patience. That's why they are present and that's why they are thinking that this is bubble of 75,000 or 22,600. All right, Sanjeev, this is my last question to you. Um, you know, if you look at globally what's happening across, you have uh, layoffs in several sectors, including tech, which is also a key driver. Um, if you look Am at otherwise, there are recessions in some places. India, yes, you are. Um, to Sanjeev Bhaseen, um, and if you look at also the inflation for that matter in the global market, India may not have seen that kind of inflation, uh, uh, recession at this point, but that's also a global factor. Do you see these as dominant effects for the Indian economy and the Indian stock market? <clears throat> Correct. And we are, uh, you know, you, you put you summed it up well. We are missing the woods for the trees that in the short run, there is too much of euphoria and the liquidity is calling the shots. But we still remain in a regime where the U.S. inflation last, to la last year hit 9% and it is now coming to some sort of semblance. But still, there is no, no talk of a rate cut till maybe the third quarter of this year, which was expected to come by March, April, which means money will still be tight. And if inflation, for any reason, geopolitical or otherwise, starts to rear up, that could again be a democratic sword, because the bond yield rising means money will go into fixed assets. So for the Indian context, inflation has been more or less well contained, but since uh, oil has started to rise, that is an inflationary, uh, you know, uh, for us, India is a net importer of oil and oil prices rising means pressure on the rupee, pressure on bonds and inflation. So in the short okay. run, like we said, uh, we have reached a very, very sweet spot and maybe earnings will be the next catalyst. But I would say a little bit of caution is much heeded now when, uh, when everyone is more or less certain that the market is going to go up. You need to be a little cautious here because uh, corrections, when they come, they don't come announced. They come unannounced and that can uh, upset the apple cart maybe in the short to the medium term. Well, I must thank you, Sanjeev Bhaseen, as well as Dr. Ravi Kumar for joining us, joining us on a very short notice, joining us on a very important aspect. And it was a huge challenge for you to be actually breaking this down for viewers who may not be following the economic aspect or the stock markets extremely closely. But I think you've done it well. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us.